This is the Mini Swarm A2. This is the most powerful, mighty mini PC. And it is mighty, mighty, just letting it all hang out. This is the AMD flavor, in case you couldn't tell from the box art. Let's take a closer look. So this is the Mini Swarm MS A2 9955. Zen 5, Zen 5 in this little package? Yes, Zen 5. And you'll notice the model number, 9955. That suggests that AMD thinks this is even beyond the 9950. 16 cores, 32 threads, upgradable memory, built-in SFB plus 10 gigabit, dual port, dual port built in two and a half gig, built-in dual USB type C, built-in HDMI, two type A ports at the back, one 10 gig, one five gig, 12 volts input at the front, two more five gig USB ports, a USB 2.0 port, a combo port, and a power button. This also has a PCIe slot, it's upgradable can run internal U.2, can run internal triple M.2. So this is a second generation product from Minis Forum in this form factor. And it has a lot of lessons learned from Minis Forum in this form factor. And this is a substantial upgrade. Now we reviewed the Intel based version of this last year. And I've been running that in my home lab successfully ever since. And it is ridiculously powerful. We've done videos and projects with these running Proxmox, Linux, Windows natively, you name it. In a second here, we're gonna to try to upgrade this thing to 128 gigabytes of memory. 128 gigs in this form factor. It can do it. Tiny all metal construction. Got dual fans, at top and bottom. I've even got my NVIDIA A1000 GPU ready to go. Now we also stuffed an A4000 into this thing. There's actually an aftermarket cooler you can get to upgrade your NVIDIA SFF A4000, 20 gigs of VRAM. And that does work in this chassis. This will support up to a 75 watt PCIe peripheral. We also did an upgrade for serial attached SCSI. So this could be a disc shelf controller, but you do have to add another fan to cool those serial attached SCSI controllers because they're designed for server airflow and this doesn't have enough server airflow to do that. It is normally cool and quiet. That is the appropriate configuration for this. So depending on if you're planning to use it for a home lab, server, mini server, whatever. If you're using it as a workstation, you don't have to worry about any of that. It's great out of the box. Now, also included in the box is the power brick, which is uh, ample. It is larger and more massive than the actual thing itself. Three amps at uh, 19 volts, 240 watts. Sorry, three amps input amperage. Output is 19 volts, 12 amps, 240 watts. Makes sense because you can run that 9955 at 100 watts plus 75 watts, and then you've got accessories and everything else. It's like, oh yeah, we're gonna have plenty of margin. There's also some mounting screws for various accessories, an HDMI cord, your, your power cable, and this, the adapter accessory. So this is how Minis Forum used this in the first generation devices to give you support for U.2 devices. Now, why would you wanna rock a U.2 in something like this? Because you can run 16, 32, 64, 122 terabytes in this form factor, and it'll run great. So this PCB is basically an adapter that is designed specifically for this form factor, but look look at the thoughtfulness of design, extra power input. That is because a U.2 can use 25, 35 watts. Theoretically, an M.2 should top out at 12 watts. There are some Samsung M.2 that'll use 15 watts. They'll do little power excursions, as we call it, 15 watts, so it's, 12 watts on average over time, but not everything works with that form factor. What? No! Upgrading this platform to 128 gigs of memory could not be easier, or if you got the bare bones kit, installing your memory and your SSD could not be easier. Just slide the, the case open, as I have. Pop three screws out of the top of the heatsink from the PCIe slot side, and then the cooling fan should be removed. Now I love this design because you're gonna get ample airflow over both the CPU and the RAM. DDR5 memory can run quite hot, especially in this configuration. This platform really only supports DDR5 5600. There's no use in getting faster memory for this unless you wanna play with things, but I'm assuming you want stability, and if you want stability, DDR5 5600. Crucial is the different kits that I've tested. I've tested dual 16, dual 32, and dual 64. I've also got a dual 48 gig kit around here, but 
it'll work fine with the dual 64s. Now, the dual 48 is much less expensive than the dual 64. And 96 gigabytes of memory is almost as good as 128. So unless you know you need 128 gigs, you're probably fine with 96 gigs. The only other trick with installing DDR5 is making sure that you get the DIMM inserted all the way. You shouldn't be able to see the gold contacts or only see it just a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit. Pay attention to that in the, the video here and make sure yours looks the same. Now, something to pay attention to here in the default configuration, the M.2 comes in the primary M.2 slot, but notice you got two other slots. Those are secondary, and we'll talk a little bit more about what that means in a second. But if you wanna run a U.2, you can put the adapter card in, mount the U.2, and you're good to go. However, pay attention. The U.2 height support is limited here, seven and a half millimeters, absolute maximum, unless you wanna run without a case, as I maybe have 3D printed some accessories to deal with the lack of case. So the taller M.2, like a 15 millimeter, or uh, you know even a 12 and a half millimeter is not gonna work all that well in this case. You, you wanna to stick to like seven and a half millimeters, give or take. You could probably squeeze a 12 millimeter in there. Sometimes they give themselves a half a millimeter for all the stickers they put on top of the drive. And it could kinda of work, but it's little, it's just, uh, I don't know. Getting to this, you just have to take out three screws for the fan on this side. You get plenty of airflow for both the M.2 and the internal componentry and the Wi-Fi card. However, you may also have to run your M.2 without a heat sink. So it's just a naked circuit board. The other fun thing about this is 110 millimeter. So if you're gonna run those 110 millimeter enterprise class M.2, you totally can in this configuration, just sans heat sink. Another improvement I see this generation is uh, heat sink for your SFP plus modules. If you're gonna use optics in there, the amount of power that the optics use can vary, which has to do with heat generation, like how much power they use corresponds to how much heat they're gonna generate. And the older Intel version of this had a little trouble heat dissipation, but this, they've made improvements. So uh, that's nice. Better thermal connections, good job Minisform. Getting your SSD and your memory installed on the bottom, pretty easy. But don't worry if this first post takes a really long time, especially with 120 gigs of memory. It might post really quickly. It might take 10 minutes. It won't take 10 minutes every time. It just has to train the memory. First world DDR5 problems. I don't know if you can hear this, but this is the fans basically at maximum and it's not louder than my air conditioner. Now, if you want to install an add-in card like this one, first you're gonna need a half height bracket, not a full height bracket, half height. And you will have to take off the screws for the back and sort of snap it off. It's a little convoluted to get in here and mount your, your GPU or whatever it is that you're installing. If you want to, you can also install an Oculink accessory. This is a PCIe slot to Oculink connector. This is four PCIe lanes. And this would let you run an external, like a 5090 would be fine. You'll, you'll need an external power supply. It'll only be connected at four PCIe Gen 4 lanes, blah, 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 but you got some options. Now, some Minisform machines have come with an Oculink adapter like this or an adapter board or something special. This is not bundled with the A2, but I think Minisform is considering selling these uh, Oculink accessories for this. You can also pick these up on, on eBay or anywhere else. Oculink to PCIe or PCIe to Oculink adapter and then the expansion cables and all that stuff are um, pretty readily available on the internet. Good, HDMI, excellent. Hey, look at that. And now in case you're wondering like I was, where all the PCIe lanes come from? There's not really that many PCIe lanes. The X16 slot, it's really gonna run at X8 or it does support bifurcation. You can run X4, X4. Minisform has actually exposed a lot of options in the BIOS. We'll cover all that in the BIOS tour. The two USB-C ports, they're USB-C, 10 gigabit, and also DisplayPort Alt mode. They're not Thunderbolt 4. I tried, you know, forcing enabling Thunderbolt 4. Thunderbolt 4 is, or uh, USB 4, Thunderbolt compatibility. It's, uh, it's basically a non-starter. Uh, the dual SFP Plus interface here, it's powered by the Intel X710, and i226V for our dual two and a half gig, which is great. That's exactly what you need for VMware, Proxmox, whatever, home lab. It's, it's really good. The NVMe, NVMe 3, that's PCIe Gen 3. The other two are PCIe Gen 4, which is great. So it's not like you've got a ton of PCIe lanes here, but being able to run your GPU at, by eight, that's pretty good. This little fellow was only eight lanes anyway. RTX A1000. 
Well, it still gets the job done. Well, that's it. We've got a new world record holder, or at least a record holder for machines in this office. 3183 single core, 17845 multi core score. You can actually get better scores than this if you're willing to tune things in the BIOS. This is a phenomenally good score. 9955 HX Fire Range. I get why AMD calls it Fire Range. It's designed TDP of 55 watts, but Mini's Forum lets this breathe a little bit. This is also on the performance profile and with 128 gigs of memory. See, 128 gigs of memory actually hurts the performance just a little bit because it's so many ranks and so many chips that it's hard to run it at 5600. Actually only achieves stability at uh, 3200 in the default auto training configuration. But Mini's Forum does expose a lot of memory options and so if you're willing to put in the time to sit here and tune it, you can get it back to 5200 and 5600, but you're gonna have an easier time running 5600 with like 64 gigs of memory and less because it's less ranks. In this configuration with eight to 64, we're getting just about 60 gigabytes per second read and about 116 nanoseconds for the latency. Not too bad. The max boost clock on the CPU is also 5.5 gigahertz. I was surprised that it was that high, but it does seem to consistently boost that high. And of course, A to 64 burn-in testing and Hardware Info 64 and Cinebench tell us a pretty interesting story about temperatures in this machine as well. Now let's go on a quick tour of the BIOS options. This is more BIOS options than I've ever seen in a Mini's Forum BIOS, so it's nice to see all the options. And all those options let me get my 128 gigs of memory working at optimal speed. 99 nanoseconds latency. Woo. Well, at least it's reported by ADA64, which is somewhat flawed in its own respects, but hey, I'll take it. So this is the Mini Swarm BIOS tour. Here with the BIOS tuning, it is working at 5600, which is fantastic. And I'll show you what I changed to get it to work at that speed. I had to go under AMD overclocking, DDR and Infinity Fabric settings, DDR options. Can improve overclock memory support for modules over 6,000 with potential boot time and or latency trade-offs. So memory target speed 5,600, uh, active memory timing settings enabled, and then uh, DDR power options, power down, disable. So with power down disabled, I was able to get the memory module to train and boot at 5600 and, and perform pretty well. There are, however, more options exposed in this BIOS than I have ever seen in a Mini's Forum BIOS. So if you're looking to do something custom, you totally can. Oh, and if you're wondering about ECC support, it does seem to be supported. There's your uh, ECC B-roll. If you are planning to use this as a home server, always on for AC loss control would be my recommendation. This BIOS also supports net booting and you can net boot off the X710 and the i226V. The graphics card also supports X8 or X4, X4. And you can also pick if you want to run it at Gen 3 or Gen 4. Oh, and it has a, a Realtek. It's a 226V and a Realtek. I'll need to fix that in the, in the thing. Now the networking configuration on this, i226V, two and a half gig, Realtek, two and a half gig, and a dual port Intel X710 SFP Plus dual 10 gigabit. No Thunderbolt or USB 4 networking because it's Type-C 10 gigabit plus DisplayPort Alt mode. So you can use those for DisplayPort out. Could you run three displays with this? Yes, you could. I've added an A1000 in here as a demo as well, and that is running at eight PCIe lanes. Bottom line, this really is the fastest mini PC that I have ever tested for Mini's Forum or anywhere else. Zen 5, 16 cores, 9955HX, BIOS options to give you up to 75 watts, ridiculous single thread performance, ridiculous multi-core performance. If you're gonna run this as a mini server, this is uh, hugely powerful and very power frugal. It does idle a little high and almost all of the power budget is because of the X710. This thing idles at like 25 to 30 watts minimum just because of the X710. For normal usage, Proxmox boot up, running Linux, and just background tasks, not a fully heavily loaded system, uh, it's more like 45 watts, 55 watts, something like that for idle. And that's with 3M.2 installed, but no PCIe device. Fully loaded with a PCIe device and a U.2 and 2M.2, I was seeing a maximum of 220 watts through this system. And the fans seem to have a turbo mode, so it does get louder than it normally gets when you're running in that full tilt turbo mode. Also, when I was running the burn-in testing and the CPU temperature would creep up around 92 degrees C, if I did something else that would generate a lot of heat, like 
uh, doing a lot of write tests on our U.2, the fans do kick into a higher gear and you can't hear them. They get a little bit louder. So I suppose if you've asked the system to be quiet, then the fans will ramp when it gets above about 88, 89 degrees C. But it doesn't get above 70 degrees C in normal usage. It's only those hardcore benchmarks. And the temperature slowly creeps up over a five or 10 minute period. So just depends on where you put it. Make sure that you've got plenty of breathability on both the bottom and the top. The spacing that these rubber feet provide does seem to make a significant difference in terms of how this thing is able to cool itself on the top and the bottom. The intake on the top is for the CPU and the memory. The intake on the bottom is for the networking and everything else. And the networking generates just as much heat as everything else because it's a 10 gigabit X710 controller. So this thing could be audible. It might be a little louder than my air conditioner in all of those sort of heavy usage scenarios. But in normal usage scenarios, it's not gonna be. Bottom line, 16 cores for this price point, for bare bones, for a mobile workstation or a mini workstation, or server platform. I mean, you can add a SAS controller here and do the mod. I mean, this is a ridiculous little machine. I, I, I can't believe that it is as fast as it is. It really is fire range. Good job, AMD. Good job, Minis Forum. If you pick up one of these and you want to use them for a project, you want to show off pictures in the Level 1 Forum, I'd like that a lot. Show me what you're up to. Let me see how your projects go. What ideas do you have for projects? I certainly have liked the V1 uh, the Intel version of this that I've been running, and so I'm, I'm pretty excited to do some machine learning or AI stuff on this. Who knows, maybe I'll do a 3D printed case to give us a little bit more headroom for that SFF A4000 GPU. It's two slots. It's it's half height, doesn't require extra power, but it's it's taller than will fit in this case. If you didn't see that video, check it out. I'm Wendell, this is Level 1. It's been a quick look at the Minis Forum A2. AMD, 16 cores, for the win. All right, I'm signing out, and I'll see you later.